Hey everybody, my name's Daryl Obera. Welcome back to Journey to VR. So this week's gonna be super cool. I'm gonna be showing you part one of a two-part video on how to use the claw system inside of Maya combined with the audio node in the Motion Graphics Toolkit to animate cloth getting driven by the music. So I'm gonna use the audio spectrum of a wave file to drive the wind force in a cloth sim. So in part one of the video, I'm gonna be showing you how we can set up the cloth simulation and sharing with you a few kind of hidden tips and tricks along the way. And this is ultimately the end result we're gonna to get to after the two part video. So as you can see, it's the urban logo that we've been playing around with before. It's basically got a version that's getting ripped off the wall or kind of shredded off the wall. And you can see as that music is playing, the bass is kind of pulsing the wind force, which is kind of driving it and kind of ultimately ripping it off the wall. So that's what we're gonna to get to at the end of the second part of the video. For part one, like I said before, I'm gonna be concentrating on on setting up the cloth sim and showing you some really cool workflows that you can do with cloth. So let's hop into Maya and check it out now. All right, so here we are inside of Maya and what we're looking at currently is a texture mapped version of that wall. So this is the file that we've been working with over the last couple of months. And obviously what we wanna do is get a version of this that's going to be get cloth that's going to rip off of the wall. So to do that, all I did was I went into Illustrator and isolated out the front, the light version, and brought that back in in the form of an SVG import using the SVG node inside of Maya. I then went ahead and on the tessellation attributes for that SVG import, turned on deformable. And that's how I got that nice tessellated mesh, which is gonna be perfect for doing a cloth sim on there. So with that done, the next thing we want to do is set up our cloth simulation. So the first thing you want to make sure when you're doing cloth is that your playback speed is set to play every frame. Anytime you're doing dynamics inside of Maya, it's very important that your playback speed calculates every single frame for the physics engines to work. So with that checked, the next thing we're going to do is just jump over to our FX menu or our FX menu structure and you can either use the shelf button to do it right here to create a cloth object, or you can use the in cloth drop down. So we're just gonna go ahead and say in cloth, create a cloth object from that guy. And if we start the playback of our simulation, you'll see that it starts to drop down. So the cloth object reveals that texture mapped version behind it, but it's moving very slowly. And the reason that it's moving very slowly is by default, the physics engines inside of Maya assume that each unit is a meter. In reality, my preferences are set to each unit being a centimeter. That's probably what your preferences are set to also. So we need to compensate for that difference in size. And that's very easy to do by just grabbing the solver node. You just grab this nucleus node and go to the attributes on it for the space time. So if you go into scale attributes and you take this space time scale, just make that 100 times smaller. So just say 0.01. And now the physics engine is going to you know, work correctly. So a centimeter is equal to a centimeter now as opposed to being equal to a meter. So obviously the cloth is going to drop at the right rate. Gravity kicks in and it makes it move very fastly as you would expect. So now that that's done, the next thing we wanna do is start to get some collision objects in our scene. So I've actually got a little bounding box that I've made in uh, some lightweight geometry that we're gonna turn into a passive collider. And if we just display the collision thickness on that guy, you can see it's just a low res piece of geometry kind of making up where those walls are and the floor. So we're gonna just drop that down to 0.5 for its collision thickness and hide the display of that collision object. So now if we play this back, you'll notice that obviously our cloth is gonna drop, it's gonna hit the ground and it's gonna just kind of scoot across the ground there and whoosh across the ground. Now this is where you can start to have some fun. The cloth has a lot of attributes that you can play around with on the cloth shape node to define what type of material it's made of. And the real ones that you're gonna to wanna to play around with are the dynamic properties. So there's stretch resistance, compression resistance, um, bend resistance, all these things go into making up how this cloth is going to behave. And we include a lot of presets that give you a really great jumping off point. So if we switch this over to something like burlap, and play it back, it's obviously going to behave very differently. You can see it looks really heavy when it drops, it doesn't compress on itself quite as much, and it doesn't slide across the floor the same way that it did previously. Also, if we jump over to something completely opposite, something like silk, it's gonna be really light and airy, and it's actually gonna get caught up in the pressure model. It generates lift. You can see that these little pieces kind of lift around and start to swarm around, and you can adjust how much, um, densities in the air. And this is a really fun parameter to play around with. If you go back onto that solver node and you look at the gravity and wind settings, you have air density. So if you put it to zero, it's the vacuum of space. You're not gonna have a lift model in there. So you can see it just drops down. Nothing's getting caught up or swirling around like leaves blowing in the wind. There's no lift being generated. But if we put this up to something like 10 and play it back with silk, it's really gonna get caught up in that and kind of blow around and get caught in these little vortexes and eddies and it generates a lot more lift. So thicker, denser air, influences the fabric more, makes it move a little bit faster, it makes the wind forces a little bit stronger and things like that. So that's just something to kind of play around with and keep in mind. 
So with that done, let's go ahead and get this back down to a value of one. And let's go and start to attach this object to the wall. So how do you do that? It's actually very simple to do. What we're gonna use is a series of constraints and the constraints work on a component level. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an edge and we'll just uh, double click on one of these guys to do an edge loop select. So it went ahead and it grabbed all the outer edges that were continuous um, on that outside of the urban logo. A few of these little pieces actually aren't in the selection. Obviously they're separate, they're separate, um, they're separate shells. So they're not gonna be part of my constraints. And that's okay, cause I do want a couple pieces kind of just blowing around. So with those edges selected, we can go ahead and create the constraints and we're gonna create an in constraint. In this example, we wanna create a transform constraint. So it goes through and it pins all of those points down. And the constraints have a lot of options in them to adjust how they behave. Do they have some spring to them? Or are they just hard? One of the ones that you play around with a lot is glue strength. And what glue strength does is it allows you to turn on and off the constraints on a per constraint basis inside of the selection. What that means is it, it's evaluating each constraint and it's figuring out how much pressure it's under. If the threshold has been exceeded, then the constraint breaks, the glue breaks. So what does that look like? Well, if we hit interactive playback on this and I start to drop that glue strength down here, you'll see that it'll get to a point where it'll actually start to fail. As I start to drop this down, you can see right there, it just basically failed. So if we kind of rewind this guy and let it play back, you can kind of dial it in and you can get it get to a point where some of it fails and some of it sticks. So you can see that it fails right there on the very top of this first, and then it just ends up ripping itself right off the wall. So that's really, really cool. Now here's an interesting thing. You'll notice that this glue strength is dynamic. I can adjust it interactively to kind of make it um, turn on and off, but you can also texture map it. And this is sort of a hidden feature. You'll notice that there's no mapping buttons next to any of these attributes. So how do you do that? Well, you just have to jump into the node editor and grab the right node to modify it. So if we go ahead and collect the, or select the cloth shape, go up to my windows and go to the node editor and we just graph in this guy. With that node editor graphed, we're gonna grab this in component. So the in components is the one that's going to allow me to map the glue strength. So you can either use a texture map or you can use per vertex. And if you use per vertex, you use the paintbrush tools in Maya's viewport to paint the vertex values directly on the cloth object. Um, which is pretty straightforward. So in this example, we're gonna use texture and I'm going to map that with a procedural texture. So this is super cool because what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a, an interactive element that I can use to turn on and off those, those glue, the glue strength. So basically turning on and off the constraint with a ramp that I can wipe through that object. So what's that look like? Well, right now you can see that it's black on the bottom, white on the top. So if we hit interactive playback, and I start to pull this black up a little bit higher, those constraints on the bottom start to fail first. You can see them kind of pulling off there and then ultimately it's gonna get enough pressure that it's gonna rip the other constraints off just from the weight of the fabric. So pretty awesome. Now, obviously if we wanted to, we could switch this type of ramp. So instead of being a U ramp, a V ramp, we could go to a U ramp. So now it's gonna fail on this side first. And basically as it kind of moves across, it's going to, um, you know, as, as I move the black handle across here, it's going to start to rip that guy right off the wall, which is really, really pretty awesome. Now, another thing that you can do with this, it's kind of cool, is you can actually turn these constraints back on. So watch what happens if I start to make it go back to white, if I drag it the other way here, and then I pull the white handle down, it's actually going to attach that object back onto the wall. And that's just crazy cool. I mean, the types of things that you can do with the claw system in the motion graphics kind of perspective is really, really fun. If you start to think of it in these kind of abstract ways, you can do all these really kind of cool effects. Now, this isn't the effect that I wanted to get to. It's just one that I happened to stumble upon when I was doing my R&D on how to rip the object off the wall. And I thought it was super fresh, so I shared it with you guys. So what we wanna do is we wanna get back to the point where our object is attached to the wall. So we're gonna put our glue strength essentially back up to one just by making these guys um, both be white here. Let's make sure that's white and that's white. And we're gonna jump back onto that constraint node and I'm just gonna drop this down to something like 0.5, kind of lower it down a little bit. And what I wanna do is I wanna use the wind to blow these objects off. Now there's a few areas that I wanna make sure that are actually attached to, uh, to the wall all the time. So I'm just gonna grab some more edges here, you know, somewhere like that. I'm gonna add shift to add to my selection and just double click on these edges and we're gonna create another constraint. Here's a really cool tip. The last time you go into a menu structure, and this only works on Windows, but if you go onto a menu like in constraint and I click that with my middle mouse button, it will repeat the last function that I did in that window. It's a pretty hidden little undocumented feature inside of Maya, but allows you to work very quickly. So again, if I wanted to bring up my note editor, Windows note editor was the last command I executed in Windows. So if I just middle mouse button click on that, it's gonna load up my note editor. So that's, that's super fun. So with that done, I'm gonna grab a couple other little points over here. Uh, let's just go ahead and grab some verts. 
and I just want to pin, you know, maybe that area and I don't know, that looks pretty cool. Well, I'll create another constraint on that and I'm going to drop that constraint down to something like 0.875. And now if we play this back and we jump back onto our in cloth node here, we'll go back into our interactive playback. You can see that it's kind of stuck on there. Those constraints are holding it up, but I'm going to use my wind speed and I'm going to make it go minus one in X as opposed to positive one because I want it to blow out. I'm going to use that wind speed now to just start blowing that fabric back and forth. And that is basically you know, what, what I want to do is I just want to blow that back and forth and it's ultimately going to rip off the wall except for those few spots that are tagged down. So that's essentially what I did to get to that end result. Now this is just part one showing how to do the claw sim. In part two, I'm going to show you how we can go ahead and take this wind speed and have it driven by the audio node in the motion graphics toolkit. So how to take something that's in the motion graphics toolkit and hook it up properly to an object that lives outside of that network is in part two of the video. So I'm just gonna play this back um, one more time. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch Journey to VR. I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you're watching this on YouTube or Vimeo, make sure you go back to the area. On the area, I've got a lot of other tutorials that I've done as well as interviews with some customers. And we have an amazing amount of stories that have been written. So thank you again so much for watching this. Cheers, everybody.